Men Sunday. And the theme for Men Sunday is, is men are accepting the challenge. The scripture verses have already been read. And the subtopic is we are victors and not victims. Hallelujah. I recognize that and I accept that. But this morning I'm speaking to you on the topic, God is still in control. We are victors and not victims. God is still Hallelujah. in control. And sometimes Hallelujah. we have to be reminded that God is still in control. Glory be to Jesus. My text comes from Psalm chapter 8 verse 4 and it reads, What is man that you are mindful of him? and the son of man that you visit him. What is man that you are mindful of him, that you take the time to think of his well-being, and the son of man that you visit him. In spite of the widespread medical truths, the scientific facts, and the conspiracy theories, there is no doubt in the minds of real Christians holy saints and discerning believers that the sins of legislators who defy God's law by replacing it with their own, the transgressions of spiritually corrupt church leaders, the disobedience and rebellion of those who profess to be Christians but live carnally, and the atrocities of the unsaved have resulted in a global divine judgment in the form of a pestilential disease of pandemic proportions that is known throughout the world as the deadly COVID-19. And I know that we spend a lot of time listening to you, the, to the news. Sometimes on your smartphones you get alerts from Yahoo, you go to YouTube and you hear a whole lot of who is responsible for COVID-19. You hear the dread of it, you hear what it is doing, you hear all kinds of outbreaks, you hear everything except that God is in control. You hear everything except the sins of mankind, the rebellion of mankind, the things that we have done has caused this to happen to us. And so God is in control because he has given a promise that he will protect and he will preserve the righteous. You see, you cannot go against the Ten Commandments. You can't legalize sodomy and homosexuality and say people should be free to love who they want. When God say love who I say you shall love. You can't legalize abortion which is murder and think that God who is still in control is going to sit down and do nothing. It is already written in the scripture. The Lord said to the nation of Israel when he brought them through the waters of the Red Sea, he says, if you disobey my word, exactly what you saw me did to the Egyptians, it is going to come upon you. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not rewriting the scriptures. He has already stated what it will be like when we disobey him because there's nothing new under the sun and we are made of the same Adamic nature. This demonically aged disease, in spite of the medical part of it and the physical part of it, in the sense of what you experience in your body, COVID-19 is demonically aided. There's, there's an element to it that is demonic, and I know that from experience. I remember lying on my bed for 14 days on the demonic attack. And I remember the Lord saying to me, he said, Joe was a chosen vessel called to suffer many things in my name. And he, but he had to wait until I came to deliver him. Amen. And as I laid on my bed, it was a COVID-19, but I knew at the end of it what it really was. So I don't want you to be scared of me being here today. You didn't have COVID-19. I was just attacked by the enemy with the same attack he brought in 2014. 
but the enemy had a plan. And as I lay there waiting for God to heal me, I lay there for 14 days, confessing the word and believing that at the appointed time, I will get up from off my bed. And when I got up off my bed, I, it was the, the Friday and, and, and that week beginning the month of April. I remember the Monday lying down sleeping. And while I was sleeping, I had a vision. And in this vision, I saw a demon coming towards me and it was a principality. The demon was in the form of a man. He was like seven feet, five inches tall with broad shoulders and some sharp mean eyes. And the Lord allowed me to discern the thoughts of that evil spirit. And the demon said, somebody is going to tell me how she got up from off that bed. Because the devil intended to take me out during this time. You see, there's a spirit of fear that is running, hot, ruling, running, and wreaking havoc in the earth. And when you operate in fear, you lose your faith. I have always had to live by faith, uh, but at this time, uh, it, is, it is testing the faith of believers no more than ever before. And when I saw that, I got up off the bed and I said, listen, I've got to get back, uh, you know, into my momentum and activity and start doing things around the house because I'm not going down. It's not my time to leave us yet. The next day around 3 p.m., I was asleep. And I saw another demon coming, but this was a lesser one, but it was a COVID-19 demon. And the Lord permitted me to know that this demon was now sent. They didn't get through the first time now to see if it could kill me. And I got up again and I began to walk. And so I want to say to the church, because the natural mind cannot discern the things of God, that there is a demonic element to this disease. And the devil is seeking to get people out of the earth before they're born again, that he can drive their souls into hell with his. And he's seeking to take the anointing out of the earth. And we've got to stand upon the word of God like never before. The last message I preached was Wednesday the 18th of March. And I remember God saying prophetically through me to the people, he says, this disease, this pestilence, will prove who our real Christians are not. I thought I was speaking only to those that I was talking to, not realizing that he was speaking to me directly. And I had to believe God that I will not die, but I will live to see the glory of God and to declare the word of God. And every pain and every symptom you can think of was going on in my body as I lied there. I said to God, I said, who had the experience of going to come back. People who when they are dying and they begin to experience the glory of heaven, they don't want to come back. I said, God, I know there's no disappointment in heaven, but I'm telling you now, if I die before my time, I am going to be disappointed because you promised me that I will take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations of the world. You said to me, Acts of me, and I will give you the heathens of the nations as your inheritance. I walked off my job without any severance pay. I left my mother and father and everybody to follow you to a strange land. Now to die like this. And my name is written in the Lamb's book of life and the life today. Because God said not so, I'm alive today because my faith is in the ability of God to preserve and to protect the righteous. What you are feeling in your body is real this morning. But there's a God that has made a promise to the redeemed and to the righteous that no evil shall be fallen. Amen. Thousands, tens of thousands of people have died. Thousands are suffering from all kinds of life-threatening diseases. And billions of people are living in fear of becoming sick unto death or dying. Billions of people, including Christians. There are some believers because it seems as though the news media has made it look like church is a place of death. If you're going to the house of God to praise God, you are going to die. But the nightclub is open and the bars are open and everything else is open. But if you go to the house of God, you're going to
we were praying for those that are sick. He said, all of us doctors, we were depressed. We had no hope. Nothing was happening. And people were dying. He said, but this pastor had a piece. He had a piece that permeated the world. And he suddenly realized that there was no peace in science. There was no blessed assurance in science. I say to the church of Jesus Christ this morning, what's the necker and said to Hezekiah? What is this confidence you have? Are you putting your confidence in science? Or are you putting your confidence in God? And because of the peace of the pastor, that young doctor reconciled himself back to God. And he said, many of us, we have peace now. We are serving God. We have a hope that where science fails, God does not fail. And some people have died as martyrs, but some were brought out because of the iniquity. They were clothed in the glass in the ecclesiastical vestments, but they live as whores and prostitutes, as heathens. Some of them were into the new age and going to the old man to multiply their membership. And the same God they serve brought them out of the earth. But there's a redeemer, there's a people that God is anointing and empowering to bring out a COVID-19 to say to the world, I know who I believe in and I'm persuaded that God is able to keep that which I have committed unto him. He's not the God of the dead, he's the God of the living, he's the resurrection and the life. I say to you today, arise, arise and be healed, arise and be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. God has not given to us the spirit of fear, but of power and love. And and a a I know what it's like to fear. Hallelujah. I experienced my bout with the attack of fear, where the enemy was saying to me, uh, if you go outside, you're going to die. If you go outside uh, and the wind is blowing, uh, all the droplets is going to come to you and it's going to kill you. Uh, can you picture living in a house uh, for two years uh, and not even getting some fresh air? Uh, and I had to remind myself uh, that she that dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. For I will say of the Lord, He's my rock, He's my fortress, He is my protection. There were people that were shut in and they still got it. How did they get it? It is demonically transferred as well. The devil is out of the human race. But for those of you whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life, I've come to tell you today that God is still in control. He lives in your house. He's in your zip code. His eyes are watching over you because you are more valued to God than the very sparrows. If we trust God, we're coming out more than conquerors. If we trust God, we're coming out the head and not the tail. We must be too blessed to be stressed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The destructiveness of COVID-19 has many people in the world and in the church in desperate need of real lasting help out of this disaster and a cure that would work instantly and permanently. Every time you read the news, you hear there's a cure. No, that is not a cure. We're trying something else. So it's cure, no cure, maybe so. It is, it is not. Another one is coming and we're trying. But Jesus Christ is still the answer. Hallelujah! I tell you, I laid on that bed. If I'd gone to the emergency room, they would have sent me back home. No medical insurance, no personal physician, no one, a hundred doctor look at my body on my cell phone by camera and 
diagnose me and send my prescription to the pharmacy. I laid on my bed uh, in the presence of the Most High God. Uh, and God came right on time. Uh, I am saying to the church today that God uh, is still able. Uh, do you believe God or not? Uh, do you believe the word of God or not? Uh, because we have been trained uh, to say the right things uh, and to even know the right things. Uh, but when the test comes, uh, are we willing to stand up uh, and say, yes, God, I believe. Uh, I believe God. Uh, 14 days of no food. Uh, but God is the strength of my life. Uh, glory be to Jesus. Uh, I tell you that they that trust in God uh, shall be like Mount Zion. Uh, they shall not be moved. Right now as things stand, there's no national leader, local institution, or global organization that has the ability to do something. The World Health Organization gives us statistics, but there's no cure. All people are hearing is that the second batch of human beings uh, that are going to be killed uh, is going to be more than what went down before. Uh, and you see, as you get the facts uh, that come out of the world, uh, because the world isn't looking to God. Uh, yes. The world isn't looking to God for an answer. The world isn't behaving like Nineveh. It's about time uh, we get into sackcloth and ashes uh, and recognize uh, that God is angry uh, yes. and he's not going to relent uh, until man that is created in his image uh, and according to his likeness uh, that breathes his breath. Uh, it doesn't matter what is your religious belief, uh, whether you're atheist or agnostic, uh, you are a, a product uh, of God's creation and confess, uh, I have sinned against you. Uh, I have broken your laws uh, until the world at large uh, repent uh, and acknowledge uh, that we need deliverance from God. Uh, he's going to continue talking. Yes. We have looked to science for cure instead of the God who has given us science. Those who have God as their savior and anchor and help it's guaranteed protection and deliverance in times of crisis, calamity, the unknown, and every kind of danger in his word. God says to us in Psalm 119, verse 114, you are my hiding place and shield. I hope in your word. God, you are my hiding place. You are my shield. Whatever is coming through the veil I'm living in is not going to hurt or harm me or even come nigh my dwelling. Why? God, you are my hiding place. When you go to the job, when you go to the supermarket, and we all are breathing in circulating here, you've got to keep your trust and your hope in God. He says to us in Isaiah 41, verse 10, he says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen you, yes. I will help you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Fear thou not. Fear thou not. I don't listen to the news like Satan all day from channel to channel. Hearing the same doom and gloom, I don't fill myself with that. I fill myself with the word of God. I stand on the word of God. Yes, I understand my reality, but I come with an assurance and an insurance that is greater than anything that you can get from Geico or the general. God says no evil shall befall the righteous. It doesn't matter where you are, wherever there is evil, God says uh, it is not the portion uh, of the righteous. Uh, and that's what we believe in uh, and stand on this morning. No evil shall befall us. Yes, yes, if you walked into this building in fear and trembling, oh my God, I'm going to catch something. Uh, 
It's the devil. This is God's house. But we are God's people. And he isn't handed out COVID-19. He promised us life. And life more abundantly. It is ours today. David said to the Lord, What is man that you, God, take thought of him? And the son of man that you care about him? The King James Virgin says, What is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him? The Hebrew meaning of the word mindful means to remember, to consider. Sometimes we forget, but God always remembers. Remember. Yes. The Hebrew meaning of the word visit means to look after. Yes. What is man that you are always remembering him and considering him to look after him? You see, David was trying to wrap his head around this great awesome God. When he looked at all the wonders that God had created, how magnificent he is, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And when he considered the frailties of his human, you know, his humanity. He said to God, what is man? That you think about him. That you would actually look, take the time to look over, to look after him. David was also letting us know in this verse that the Lord does not neglect those who trust him. The Lord does not neglect anyone who puts his trust in him. He says in Psalm 9 verse 10, They that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, has not forsaken them that seek thee. So he's talking out of his experience. Anybody who knows you, anybody who has a relationship with you, anyone who seeks to make you their God, hallelujah, will put they're trusting you because you don't forsake anybody. What is man that thou art mindful of him? What is brother so-and-so that you are mindful of him? He says in Psalm 31 verse 19, Oh, how great is your goodness Amen. which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who trust in you in the presence of the sons of men. And so this morning, you must understand and know that God has laid up some goodness for you. God, when God thinks of you, he has made plans as to how he's going to bless you in the future. And so God has laid up all kinds of goodness for you. And so when people are living by fear, you are walking by faith and peace and enjoy. Why? God has laid up health for you. God has laid up deliverance for you. Sickness is not the portion of the Redeemer. Are you hearing me this morning? I have not come to deliver fairy tale to you. I've come to give you the word of the Lord. The brother testified of having to walk the COVID ward and sensing the fear. Sometimes we think it is our fear, but we are picking up the fear of people who have lost their faith or don't have an anchor that keeps the soul. And so when you sense the fear of those who reject God, you can walk with confidence knowing that God has laid up goodness for me. Fear is not a gift of God. He's given me faith. He's given me a hope, a peace, and an expectation. He said the joy that I give to you, the world didn't give it to you, and the world can't take it away. It's a joy unspeakable and full of glory, Peter tells us. That word unspeakable means that you can't find the word in the English dictionary to describe the joy of God in calamity where you can praise God. I want to say to somebody today, don't abandon your future in COVID-19. We came into 2020 believing that God was going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think uh, according to the mighty working uh, of the spirit uh, of the living God uh, on the inside of us. Uh, and I hear God saying, uh, don't give it up. Uh, don't release it. Uh, don't say it's no use uh, and no hope uh, because the world uh, doesn't have any hope. Uh, if you wanted to get married, uh, expect to be married. Uh, God is still going uh, to fulfill uh, every 
2020 promise uh, that he made to the Redeemer. Are you hearing me? By the Spirit of God, uh, if you wanted to buy property, uh, still keep looking. Uh, if you wanted to change your vehicle, uh, still keep looking. Uh, because God uh, has promised uh, how great uh, is that goodness. Uh, the goodness is laid up uh, in heaven and is coming down uh, into the earth. Uh, it's going to manifest uh, in the earth. Uh, it doesn't matter what the economy looks like. Uh, it doesn't move God. Uh, he's still a miracle working God. Uh, is there anything uh, too hard for God to do? Uh, oh God, you that made the heavens uh, and the earth uh, by thy great might uh, and outstretched arm. Uh, there is nothing too hard for God to do. Cast not your confidence away. Every day, I go down to the mailbox. If I go up to and there's no mail there, I go back at 7 because the postman come up late at times. And if I go at 7 and there's no mail there just for chance, I go back at 9 o'clock. If there's no mail at 9, I know he and the post office is closed. But why am I going to the mailbox? Nobody didn't tell me that they were going to send an M19. Is I'm going to put my future on, not determine if my blessings are going to come or not. Amen. When God wrote the Bible, he saw COVID-19 and he penned the words that he penned. Nothing is going to stop my blessing. Sarah's barren womb and, and Abraham's dead loins did not stop the son of the promise from coming. The waters of the Red Sea didn't stop the Israelites from crossing. Because when God made the Red Sea at the foundation of the world, he knew 2.5 million people would have to walk through it. And all he did was breathe through the water. The Bible tells us he sent an east wind and it blew all night. And as the wind blew, the road kept coming and the people kept walking and they walked through on dry ground. He divided the waters. He dried up the sand. Nothing was sticking in the mud. All the, the, the carts and the wagons passed through safely. This is the same God that is saying to the church, arise and build. Arise and continue to believe me. Whatever is in your body that is not working too well, I have not lost the power to heal. My name is still Jehovah Rapha. I am the God that healed thee. Whatever it is, expect your future. Expect a brighter tomorrow because some are coming down and some are going up. If you are wise and discerning, you will recognize it's promotion time. It's promotion time. And God is bringing down all the Satanists and all the Hellions and all the persecutors. They're coming down. They're retiring. They're leaving. It is time for you to ascend in your position of prominence and authority like Joseph to rule and to reign and to bring peace on the job. God is in it and he's seeking to bless the righteous. I know sometimes we forget. We forget who God is and what he does. Yes. The Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 11 that the 10th judgment of God against Pharaoh and the Egyptians was a pestilential disease that was exactly like COVID-19 that killed every firstborn or one million people in Egypt. Now I did my research. So when I said to you that it was exactly, it was exactly, precisely, the same kind of disease, the same pathology, the same thing that occurred in Egypt because Pharaoh and his people refused to repent and to let God's people go. And so while the Egyptians are being destroyed and afflicted with the disease of death, 
the Israelites were kept saved by God in the same country in a place called Goshen. Yes. God is in Egypt. Yes. His judgment is in Egypt. Yes. But there's a group of people that belong to God that is living in a place called Goshen that nothing is happening to. And you've got to realize uh, that we have been transported uh, in the realm of the spirit uh, to a place called Goshen. My God, have mercy in Zion. Uh, I wish I was preaching to a church uh, that understand who God is uh, and where you live. Uh, you might live in White Plains uh, or Mount Vernon uh, or in Brooklyn where I came from, uh, but we all are living uh, in spiritual Goshen. Glory be to Jesus. And the reason why they were kept safe in Goshen, God said to them, I want you to get the, a, a lamb without spot or blemish. I want you to slay that lamb and I want you to sprinkle the blood on the lentils of the doorpost. And he says, when the destroying angel is coming through, when he sees the blood, he will pass over you. Glory be to Jesus. You see, God gave a remedy. He gave a cure that says COVID-19 can't kill the Jews in Egypt because of the blood. The Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 12 verse 1 that it was called the Lord's Passover. Why was it called the Lord's Passover? As a demon was coming, let's say hallelujah to the borders of Goshen. It couldn't. If it came from the direction of Goshen, it had to pass over Goshen. And then it went through all the other territories in Egypt. My God of mercy in Zion. If the blood of a fallen animal had the capability of protecting God's people from a deadly disease, can you imagine what the omnipotent blood of Jesus Christ does for every believer who puts his trust in the Lord? The blood of Jesus Christ has been given to the church as a covering from danger. You cannot apply the blood to you or you cannot go under the blood. But God brings us under the blood. When the blood of Jesus Christ is applied to the life of a person yes. or thing, it makes that individual or that thing untouchable. How yes. the blood of Jesus becomes a hedge of protection around you. It is around your home, around your vehicle. It is over your house. It is over your life. It doesn't matter what is coming, what aerosol, what is blowing from one street to the next. I am underneath the blood and the devil can't do me no harm. There is still a wonder-working power yes, in hallelujah. the blood of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. The blood protects from every kind of demonic destruction uh, by his voice. Uh, the writer of Hebrews uh, tells us in chapter 12 verse 24 uh, that the blood of Jesus uh, speaks better things uh, than the blood of Abel. Uh, oh God, uh, if you try to figure it out uh, with your natural mind, uh, it doesn't make sense. Uh, but I believe God. Uh, I believe the report of the Lord. Uh, God can do anything. Uh, God can do anything. He's a miracle working God. The blood of Jesus, it speaks out or it cries out to the Father requesting and demanding judgment upon the enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Plead the blood. Plead the blood of Jesus. Come on saints, get up and put confidence in the blood of Jesus. It was shed for sin. It was shed for your protection. It was shed as a mighty weapon against the forces of darkness. Plead the blood. Cover yourself in the blood. Cover your lungs. Cover your diaphragm. Your esophagus. Your immune system. Come on and put your trust in God and be under the blood of Jesus. The problem, God.
God has for the 21st century church is that we are so educated that it has hindered us from believing the word of God. My God. We say we believe the account in Egypt. And we believe that the Israelites walked out, healed our whole, unaffected. But now we're in the same predicament in worship. Mm -hmm. And we are under the Lord's Passover. We are under the Lord's Passover. You have to see that. I remember preaching an exegete in Psalm 91. Psalm 121. And Psalm 121 says, The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Now that, that, that verse has a literal meaning, and it has a spiritual meaning. Because the ancient rabbis believed that there were demons who ruled the day, and there were demons who ruled the night. And so in Psalm 91, when the psalmist says, that the arrow by fl that flyeth by noonday, or the destruction that lives by noonday, that it shall not come nigh us. He's talking about the activity of daytime demons. And so there are demons uh, that walk around in the day trying to put things on people. And then you have the nighttime demons that come to take your life out. But when you understand the power that there is in the blood of Jesus Christ uh, and that it has a voice uh, that it speaks uh, in Exodus chapter 12 verse 13 it says the blood shall be to you for a token or the blood was a sign it was a mark it was a voice or signal to the destroying angel that the house that the blood was sprinkled on that those who were in that home was not to be touched. In the New Testament, the blood of Jesus is a stern warning. It's a strong signal. It's a forceful rebuke to the devil and all of his demons that they must see and obey. In other words, the speaking blood of Jesus Christ says to the enemy of disease and calamity, do not come near the home of the righteous and do not touch God's anointed. Whenever demons and devils see the blood of Jesus, it is a warning, it's a sign, it's a signal, or oh, you have to reverse or drive past. They are under the Lord's Passover. You can't touch them. You can't even come near. You can't even smell. You've got to keep going or turn right around because the blood of Jesus Christ has a voice and it says do not touch. In Psalm 34 verse 17, the writer says, Lord hears uh, and delivers them out of all their troubles. Uh, I want you to know that the blood of Jesus Christ uh, is a divine weapon uh, that the Lord has given to the church uh, to defeat the forces of darkness with. Uh, for the right of Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 tells us uh, they overcame uh, by the blood of the Lamb uh, and by the word of their testimony. Oh, there's wonder work in power. Yes. In the blood. Hallelujah. Jesus' victory on the cross and defeating Satan and his demons through his bodily sacrifice and his shed blood made the way for us to use the power in the blood to defeat the forces of hell in every battle. Yes. Hallelujah. I was saying to the Lord 21 years ago, to me, I was more of a radical Christian than I am now. Because sometimes knowledge, like sometimes it, it causes you to, to be less forceful than you can be. I remember taking my son to the doctor. The doctor said he has asthma. And I said, no, he does not have any asthma. And we don't want any inhaler. And I brought him home and I anointed his chest. And I spoke the word of God and he's never had asthma. 
I remember fighting demons and devils in the name of Jesus Christ, wrestling principalities and powers. And sometimes you can become so grown and mature in God and so solidified in the word radical weapon. So to speak, uh, you have greater faith, uh, but yes, and it looks uh, that your posture is, is not as, as, as aggressive uh, and destructive uh, as it used to be uh, when you didn't know the word omnipotent. Uh, all you knew that God is a mighty God. And I said, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, I like who I have become uh, in sound doctrine uh, and full of the anointing, uh, but I need to put back on uh, those old clothes of war where you were radical uh, and ignorant uh, and you approach Goliath like David uh, with just a slingshot uh, and two stones uh, instead of coming, uh, you know, with an army tank, uh, instead of hiring uh, like Asa, uh, an army to fight for you, uh, you go like Gideon with 300 men, uh, the sword of the Lord uh, and the sword of Gideon, uh, we've got to get back up uh, and start to use the blood, uh, we've got to walk through our house uh, and apply the blood to the door poles uh, and to the lintons, uh, the blood works, uh, it yeah. works, uh, it may not work for those who think uh, that they're too educated. Uh, and too scientific to, to think uh, that blood is going to do something. Uh, but I believe uh, I'm in Goshen today. I am covered under the blood. Uh, I'm going to live out COVID-19. Uh, I'm going to live uh, to 120 like I tell the Lord. Uh, I'm going to prosper. I'm going to buy house and land. Uh, I'm going to buy my vehicle. Uh, I have my 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 um li li license to learn uh, how to drive. Uh, nothing uh, is going to stop the move uh, of God in the earth. Uh, and we've got to live again. Uh, we've got to live again. Uh, are you hearing me? Uh, stop looking for doom uh, and gloom uh, and rise up. Uh, we are pilgrims passing through. Uh, yes. This is not what God is saying to the church. Don't expect to get sick. Don't expect to be infected. Don't expect to die. Because if there's no cure, it means that people will have to live with COVID-19 like people are living with HIV. And we have a God that says, I am healer, I'm protector, and I am preserver. Since the COVID-19 demon is of the same kind that was in Egypt, whenever you sense the presence of the enemy that has come to make you sick uh, or to bring premature death, uh, you must plead the blood of Jesus Christ against it. Whenever you sense it, whenever you discern it, you see, the reason why the enemy got me in March coming into April was because I didn't discern it was coming. I realized after the fact, it's like suddenly my eyes open up. Because each time he attacked me, I felt like a chill in my body, you know, like when you get that cold shiver. And as soon as I get the cold shiver, it means he's gone for the jugular. But it is over. It is over. Since then, on more than one occasion, I felt the shiver. I said, oh, they're happening this time. All those times you got away because I was a discerning. I sent your presence. I sent you want to come back again. I bind you and rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. I sent you back to hell with your assignment to unfinish and destroy when you sense it. If you get up and you don't feel like how you went to sleep, begin to bleed the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Take refuge under the omnipotent blood blood of Jesus. Hide in it. Hide in his name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower yes. and a tabernacle. Hide in God. The blessed rock of ages. I am hiding in thee. The devil will mess with the scriptures and devise doctrines of demons 
and devils. He will mess with tongues. Now people speak in demonic tongues. He will mess with miracles and do lying wonders. He will mess with prophecy and he will tell people all kinds of things to lead them out of the path of Christ. But if it is one thing the devil and his demons have never tried to touch or will never come near is the blood of Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me? And the reason why the devil will never come near the blood of Jesus is because all of God is in the blood. The blood that was in the veins of Jesus didn't come from Mary. It didn't come from Joseph. It didn't come from Adam. Jesus' blood came from his father God the father and the son and the Holy Spirit uh, created everything that there is uh, but Jesus is the only begotten of the father that word begotten means born of God he has his father's blood that's why we boast uh, that there is power in the blood of Jesus Christ uh, whenever you sense sickness uh, whenever you sense weakness uh, if you're coughing too much uh, don't say I got it. Say it ain't coming. It's a sign that the enemy is trying to take you down. If you have fever, don't say I catch it. Command it to be gone. In the name of Jesus, put the blood on the devil. Put the blood of Jesus Christ on the demons. If the blood of a fallen lamb protected God's people, how much more so the blood of his son. Since the COVID-19 is a demonically driven disease, whenever you sense the presence of the enemy that has come to afflict you with sickness, to bring about premature death, use the weapon of the word of God that is spirit and life. There are lots of people that are caught in scripture and it's coming out of their heads or they're going to open the Bible and they're break the pages that they have marked and they recite the word. But when the word of God is in you and it's anointed and it's just living, it becomes a weapon. You begin to speak. You say, devil, my God tells me what I bind on earth. He will bind in heaven. And what I loose on earth, he will loose in heaven. I bind you. You've got to obey the voice of your God and my Savior. I bind your activity. I bind up the assignment. I curse it at the source, the root, and the origin. And I lose God's healing. I lose God's deliverance. I lose God's preservation. Come on, Church of Jesus Christ. You've got to rise up and live like a victorious church. You've got to get that to a sword back in your mouth again. Let the devil know that like the centurion, you are a man of God on the authority. You are an empowered woman of God like Deborah. And you're going to fight this battle in the anointing and the energy of the Holy Ghost. I'm binding every earthbound demon because God is binding demons in the heavens and I'm loosening the goodness that he has laid up for me. I'm loosening my prosperity in Jesus' name. Even under the old covenant, God says to us in Psalm 91 verse 13, he said you shall tread upon the lion and the corporal. The young lion and the serpent, you shall trample on the foot. God is talking about demonic spirits. And when you know that you are anointed, you need to walk in the realm of the spirit and make a song. Let demons and devils know who is walking. The Bible tells us that when God came down in the garden in the cool of the day, when he began to walk, his feet made a song. And Adam and Eve knew that God was coming and they hid. If you begin to make a song with your feet in the earth, demons and devils will run because God is walking through you. He lives on the inside of you. We've got to walk like a victor. We've got to walk like an overcomer. We've got to walk like we have dominion status and power and authority over demons and devils. For the Bible tells us in Luke 10, 19 that God has given us authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the 
In Genesis chapter 3, uh, verse 15, uh, the Lord said to Satan, uh, the seed of the woman uh, will crush your head, uh, will bruise you, uh, will wound you, uh, and will strike you. Uh, I am the seed of the woman. Uh, Eve is the mother of all living. Uh, we've got to take up uh, our anointed feet uh, and begin to trample uh, Bind with your mouth uh, and trample with your feet uh, in the name of Jesus Christ uh, and crush the enemy. If you live in fear, the enemy is going to get you. But if you live in faith, it's not going to get you. It's a demonically controlled disease. And so when uh, you see the enemy coming, uh, speak the word of God in faith against the symptoms uh, you are sensing and experiencing. Uh, the Bible tells us uh, that life and death uh, is in the power of the town. Do you believe that? When the doctor tells people you are going to die in sex there are those who believe the death that is in the tongue of the doctor. But when you know that life and death is in the power of your tongue, that you've been invested with power from on high to speak what you want. Yes, you hallelujah. open up your mouth hallelujah. and you begin to speak back to the forces of darkness and you begin to tell the enemy, listen, the Lord promises me in Exodus 23, 25, he says, I will take sickness away from in the midst of thee. He said in Exodus 15, 26, I am the Lord that heals thee. He says in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, by his stripes, I am already healed. He said in Jeremiah 13, 17, he said, I will restore your health and heal you of your wounds. In chapter 33, verse 6, he says, I will bring health and healing. I will heal my people and I will let them enjoy abundant peace and security. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Open up your mouth from this day and begin to speak life. Begin to speak life in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not saying to you to deny that you may not be feeling good. I'm saying to you that when you sense or you don't feel good, life and death is in the power of your town. If you say, oh my God, how could this happen to me? You are working yourself into the hands of the enemy. That is exactly what he wants. But if you rise up and you get the oil and you anoint yourself or you do what James tells us in chapter 5 verses 14 to 15 is anyone sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, uh, anointing him with oil uh, in the name of the Lord. Uh, and the prayer offered in faith uh, will make the sick man. Uh, you see, when I was having trouble uh, with my own lungs, my own lungs, uh, because I'm an elder. Uh, I got the oil uh, and I began to anoint my lungs uh, and my body uh, and I began to rebuke the assignment uh, and I decree and declare that I will breathe in the breath of God. Uh, for the Bible tells me uh, that when God created man, uh, he breathed into him the breath of life. Uh, Job tells us uh, that the spirit of God has made us uh, and the breath of the almighty uh, has given us life. Uh, don't Give the breath that God has given to you uh, over to demons and devils. Uh, open your mouth uh, and speak life. Uh, I'm going to breathe. Uh, I'm going to live. Uh, I am going to make it. Uh, whose report do you believe? Uh, the report of your symptoms. Uh, the report of a doctor. The report uh, of what Google says. Uh, or are you going uh, to believe the word of the Lord? Uh, in Jeremiah chapter 17, uh, verse 14, it says, uh, Heal me, O Lord, uh, and I shall be healed. Uh, save me, uh, and I shall be saved, uh, for thou art my praise. Amen. 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 Am
Open your mouth, church. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. My God, have mercy in Zion. Jesus Christ is to the answer today. I am here to say to you by faith, and I am here to say to you sensibly that there is no demon or devil in hell that has the authority to take a real man or woman of God out to the earth. For the Bible tells us that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. That's what I told the devil. I said, I don't belong to you. You are are not my God, you are not my maker, my creator, my days and times are written in the palm of God's hands, my name is written in the Lamb's book of life, I said to him, the word tells me that the eyes of God run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of those that are loyal to him, and every time God looks through the earth, he sees me. He says, what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that he visits him. Oh, he can't see Sister Smith and not see me because the word of the, the, the earth is like a speck. Hallelujah, like a drop in the bucket, like the word says. And so God sees you and he sees me. He sees the demons where they are. He knows the mind of the devil. The Lord says, to me uh, before the devil gets to think his next thought uh, I already know uh, what he's going to think uh, that's why when God comes and he gives us intel and he says pray we are praying before the devil gets uh, to think the thought uh, and so when he gets to think it there's already power there saying not so there's already the word of God that is decreed in heaven uh, that is settled in heaven uh, that meets him and says you can't go because God whose eyes run to and fro throughout the whole earth that is omniscient that knows all things has already said it ain't gonna happen that's why I love God that's why I love God he's better than any alarm system that you can travel abroad and you can still look in your house but when my fire is down and, and the, the, the iPad or the phone gets sick. You can't look in the house. You can't see the thief in it. There's nothing you can do from where you are. But I'm glad that the eyes of the Lord, even now as I'm preaching, and you are sitting down there, he has, he has seen us already, and he's watching. And he's saying to those of you at home, and not here in the church, if you will trust me, you'll get the miracle you want. If you will trust me, you will live in peace and not fear. If you will believe, if you will believe my word and not doubt, you will have joy. I am still a provider. I am still a bringer. I am still a giver. I am everything that you need and more. He's looking through the earth. The Bible tells us that it says in the scripture when the Son of Man comes, when he find faith in the earth and as God is looking through the earth he's looking at the church and he's saying will I find faith in Calvary Temple today and I will I find faith in the church mother in the church father in the deacon or the elder in the evangelist or pastor in the women's president in the choir in the intercessory department will I find faith in all those who used to be testified and uh, running up and down in the church. Uh, when I find faith uh, in the church, uh, yes, God, uh, there is a remnant uh, that says I'm going to trust you. Uh, I'm going to put my hope in God uh, and not the mayor or the governor, not the president or legislators, uh, not in Fuji uh, or the scientists. Uh, we already have a doctor who's a great physician. Uh, everywhere he went, uh, he was doing good. He's the mighty healer. Hallelujah. He cleansed the lepers. Yeah. He opened the eyes of the blind. Leprosy was an incurable disease. But Jesus got rid of it in his ministry. The crippled walk. The lame walk. The demon possessed was delivered. He's the same God of Calvary Temple. Your high blood pressure. Your diabetes. Your cholesterol issues. Your arthritis, your eye problems, whatever it is that you are struggling with this morning, a 
outside of COVID-19. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. He is here to touch you. That's why he's looking. He's looking after you. And he's looking to find faith. Because God moves by faith. Some of you aren't sick. But some of you need food. And some of you are wondering how long is food going to last as some shells look scarce and things are being rational. As I was studying the psalm, one of the things I came across was in Mesopotamia thinking, Abraham came from Mesopotamia. You, the life of a human being, have no value. It was the Jews that value life because they believe that man is created in the image of God. And for that reason, man had a high status in the Jewish society. But in the Mesopotamian view of creation, it says that the gods had no plans to create people as an integral part of the world that they had set up for themselves. So they believe, the Mesopotamians believe that when the gods, because there served many gods, Abraham's father was the chief idol maker in Mesopotamia, that the gods really never wanted human beings around. But when they got tired of providing their own food, that was when they decided to create human beings to provide food for them. That's why in all of these idolatrous and occult religions, you see people running with food for the gods to put it on the altar. You have to feed the gods. One of the things that God did when he revealed himself to Moses in Exodus 3.14, he says, my name is I am that I am. I am the self-existent God. My existence does not depend upon anything or anyone. I don't need anything from anybody. In Psalm 50 verse 12 he says, If I were hungry I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all that is in it is mine. In Acts chapter 17 verse 25, Paul says he's not served by human hands as if he needed anything because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything that they need. So we serve a God that created us and made the decision that he's going to look after us. And so when David asked God the question, what is man that you are mindful of him, that you remember him, that you attend to him, that you set your heart upon him, that you keep him continually in your merciful view, always favoring him, continually attentive to him, and always bestowing care upon him. He says, what is man that you are mindful of him, that you never leave him alone, you never pass him by? He, he is still trying to fathom the goodness of God. And so we are in an era now in a time where there's so many people that are concerned about if they are going to feed their children and how long they will be able to feed children. The Bible tells us in 2 Kings chapter 6 that there was a famine in Israel. The famine was so bad that women were eating their children. People were eating the heads of donkeys which were considered unclean under the law and they were eating the dung of doves. There was nothing to eat. There was a famine. There was the woman who had eaten her son the day before that approached the king. And the king said to her, if the Lord does not help you, where can I find help? From the dressing floor, there's nothing there. From the wine press, there are no grapes to press. In other words, the king said to her, if God don't do it, it can't be done. And I know that we are living in a modern society, and we have supermarkets, and we have food trucks, those 18 wheelers, bringing in everything. We get food from Mexico, the avocados and different things are imported. And so we tend to think that if these things aren't coming, 
there isn't going to be any food to eat. But if you really believe that God sent manna in the wilderness, then you will know that it's not difficult for God to send manna again. You see, there was no food in Israel. And so when the king left the woman, he went straight to the prophet Elisha, and Elisha said to him, Hear the word of the Lord. Tomorrow, this same time, flour and barley is going to be sold at the gate of Samaria. And there was a man of God there who said to the prophet, it can't happen. Even if God put windows in heaven, it can't happen. And Elisha said, you will see it, but you will not eat it. You see, if you don't continue to believe that whether the supermarket has food or not, that you are going to get food, you're going to die from starvation. I want you to know that when God said that, the food was already outside at the doors of the city. Because when the Syrians came to destroy the people of God, they traveled with the food that they needed to eat. Isn't God comical? Isn't God that no wonder the Bible says that he laughs at famine and destruction. It's like, okay, you are going to keep my going to kill my people. And and the and the reason why there was famine was because the water was outside Jerusalem. So they stopped the water from going in. So no farming could have been done on the inside, but the food was outside the gate. And I want you to know, like the Lord says in Isaiah 55, verse 1, he says, come by without money. What is God saying? He said, I will get someone to shop for you. There are people that have food stored in their pantries and in their basement like a bodigo. And God is going to press the hearts of those people to release your food. There are people that have already shop for you. God has already taken care of your grocery bill. All you have to do is to put your trust in God. David says in Psalm 23 verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Another translation says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Another one says, you are Lord. You, Lord, are my shepherd. I will never be in need. I'm not waiting to die from famine. I'm not waiting to be malnourished. I have a God that has given a promise that he will take care. Psalm 37, 25 says, I've been young and now I am old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Psalm 146, verse 7 says, that God gives food to the hungry. Psalm 145, verse 15 and 16 says, the eyes of all look to you and you give them food in due season. You open Open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Whatever you need to eat, are you hearing me today? Are you hearing me today? If you're waiting on Gap, who pledges to give food to X amount of people or Subaru or whoever, I am here today to tell you that God is your source. He is your Jehovah Jireh. He's the El Shaddai God, the God of plenty. Yes. When Abraham left the earth, the Chaldees had began to walk up and down through the land of Canaan. There were no wells, but God told him to dig and he got water to drink. I want you to know that God knows where your food is. God knows where your chicken is. God knows where your jerk pork is. God knows where your oxtails are. Whatever you need, your milk, your butter, your aunt, Jemima syrup, your vegetables, your carrot syrup, whatever you need today, I am talking about God. I am not talking about man. Listen, if you have faith in God, you can believe that somebody in California will pack a box overnight to send it FedEx with everything that you need in it. Just as we send barrels to the Caribbean, you can get barrels coming to you when God is about to bless. Don't limit God. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, uh, do not limit me uh, because of the present circumstances. Are you hearing the Lord today? Don't limit me. He says, come by without money. Come by 
Yes. And some of you, the bread of food, the brands, the out of your own income. But that's how good God is. Uh, he likes to upgrade us. Uh, he likes to bring us to another level. Glory be to Jesus. Another thing, the final thing, point I want to talk this morning because this COVID-19 has affected the health of people and, 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 and the ability of families uh, to feed their children, single parents, or uh, mother and father in a home. Uh, another thing uh, that the COVID-19 has messed with uh, is our money. When the church is shut down, people like me who live by, by declaring the word of God, there was nothing doing. It has messed with the monies of citizens, uh, and the government is trying its best. Uh, I'm not entitled to stimulus money, uh, but every time you go to Yahoo, you hear you're getting it, you're not getting it. It's coming in May now, it's coming in June, it's coming in July, then you may hear August. Uh, but I thank God today uh, that God's stimulus package uh, is every day and every you need it all the time. Uh, glory be to Jesus. Uh, it doesn't matter. God promise. He said the gold and the silver is mine. Hallelujah. When God promised something, he doesn't give false hope. If he says it's Friday, it's coming Friday, and there's nothing that the devil can do about it. But I'm mindful of him that you will give him a stimulus package that is better than that, that any government or man can give. Because if you get this, no more is coming if they increase your full stamps it's coming to an end but because the Lord is my shepherd cometh, money cometh because I'm looking to the help for the arm does not fail the Bible tells us in 2 Kings chapter 4 of a little woman that had a need for money and she went to the man of God and she said, you know my husband uh, was a man of God and he's dead and he left death. And the king is coming to take my sons uh, into slavery uh, and I need a miracle from God. You know, sometimes uh, if we would just practice the word uh, and I'll put that checkbook on that bill full uh, and that wall, they can say, look God, uh, I don't have no money in it. Uh, I am trusting you to fill it. God will do it. But we keep looking in the wrong direction. The money belongs to God. When the Bible says the gold and the silver says every country has printed the value of their gold reserves in their own currency. Every $20 and $100 that you have, that's gold. Because if you were walking around with gold shekels and silver shekels, it would be too weighty to carry around a bar of gold and you go to the supermarket and you tell the girl to just cut off two ounces because at the price of gold today two ounces is equivalent to my food bill no we use the money and so she needed money and she went to the man of God and she says I don't have any money and I don't have anything of value in my house oh God the widow woman was like me I don't have a piece of gold that I can sell. I have no rare silver that I can sell. I don't have no Gucci bag or nothing brand name that I can sell. But I have something just like what she has. I have the oil on the inside. I have the anointing. That's what Elijah had when he turned up at the middle of Zarephath. He didn't come with money and he didn't come with food. But the anointing of God that rested upon his life uh, caused the meal uh, and the oil to multiply. Uh, and this woman, the prophet asked the woman, uh, what do you have? Uh, she said, just a little bit of oil. Uh, he said, go and borrow every vessel you can find uh, and begin to pour. Uh, I tell you, it, I start off by telling you uh, that it takes faith to serve God. It takes faith uh, for you and I to see uh, the hand of God move mightily. Uh, and supernaturally in our behalf or she closed the doors behind her and she said
sent your son uh, to get the vessels. Uh, and as they are bringing vessels, uh, this one but little bit of oil uh, in a jar is just pouring. Uh, it is just pouring. Uh, and every vessel uh, that was available uh, in her village, uh, she had it full of oil. Uh, this mother got a jubilee in a day. Uh, the Bible tells us of jubilee. Uh, came every 50 years. Uh, my God have mercy in Zion. Uh, she got an out of season blessing. Uh, yes. She got taught to that cancellation. Uh, and her sons were freed. Uh, mighty God. Uh, I want to say to you. Uh, in this season. Uh, when stocks are crushing. Uh, and there are more people unemployed. Uh, than employed. Uh, you can get a jubilee. Uh, all you've got to do is believe God. Evangelist Lord. All you've got to do is trust God. Uh, like you said. Uh, when you were reading the text. Uh, glory be to Jesus. Uh, that talks about faith. Uh, now faith is a substance. Uh, of things hoped for. Uh, it is the evidence. Uh, of things not seen. Uh, for by it. Uh, the elders obtain. Uh, a good report. Uh, if you've got faith in God today. Uh, you can get a jubilee. Uh, before the time of jubilee. Uh, you can become a millionaire. Why people are losing their millions. Why? Uh, because God is your source. Uh, he's your provider. He's your shepherd. Uh, he's your way maker. He's your promise keeper. Jesus Christ. Uh, is still the answer today. Uh, I didn't come with theology. Uh, and I didn't come with philosophy. Uh, I came with the gospel. Uh, to tell you. Uh, that the church of Jesus Christ. Uh, has nothing to fear. If you are covered under the blood. Uh, if you are dwelling. Uh, in the secret place. Uh, of the most high God. Uh, it's nothing to worry about. Uh, if you are covered as beer. And your freezer is empty. Uh, nothing to worry about. Uh, believe God. Uh, he's already bought your groceries. Uh, yes. In the name of Jesus. You got bills to pay. Yes, Lord. The landlord is looking at you funny. Nothing to worry about. Nothing to concern yourself about. Money coming for money coming for God will bring money from some unusual places. The Bible tells us, hallelujah, that Jesus said to Peter, go down to the sea. There is a fish right there with money. Glory be to Jesus. Unusual, unusual. I know in America, it seems as though the Canadian dollar has no respect. I'm taking money from Canada. It can be converted in the name of Jesus Christ. There are people in the Caribbean that has more American dollars than you and I have today in our purse. It's coming from the four corners of the earth. I'm taking the British pound. Whoever God has anointed to send me money, I am receiving it in the name of Jesus Christ. If this treasury is empty, somebody's treasury in the earth is full of money. If your husband don't have it, somebody got it. The gold and the silver is his, and God knows where his money is. One of the things that churches, some churches, is dealing with is that some members aren't tithing and giving anymore. They're holding on to their money. I want you to know that if you are getting $1,500, 10% of that is $150. And if your rent is $1,700 a month, I can't see how $150 is going to pay $1,700 in rent. You need to release your tithes. You need to release your tithes and the offerings. He said, bring the tithes, and he says, bring the offerings into the storehouse. If you don't tithe, if you don't give offering, every time you get money, a $20, a $50, you need to tithe, you need to put aside the 
offering because when you give the devil the legal right to curse you, no pastor can have that curse removed because you are not tithing. You've got to repent and you've got to start tithing and giving. The reason why the widow woman got this blessing, her husband was a tither and a giver. That's why she went to the man of God and she said, you know my husband. When you are a tither and a giver and you sense the devourer, you can speak back or you can say, no, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. God says in Malachi 3.10, he says, prove me. Prove me. If you tithe and you give offering, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. When God said to prove me, he may test me by doing what I told you to do. And you will prove what I have promised to do for you that I will do. I will make it happen. It will become a reality. You can't hold on to your times. You can't hold on to your offerings. You cannot stop giving. This is the time to give. Because you need the blessings of God upon your life. If you're getting unemployment, you have an option. Whereby you can have the or pay the IRS when you're filing. So you to keep what is theirs. They're taking it beforehand. And God trusts you enough to give you all and says to you, just give it all. Hear me, people of the most high God. No, not at all. This is not the time to doubt God. No. This is not the time to curse God and die. No, not at all. Yes, we are being tested. Yes, like every other unsaved person, we wear masks. We take medication. Because God decides if he's going to heal by his power or medicine. So there's no shame in it. No. But in spite of what you do in the natural to protect yourself, because only a fool will put himself in danger, you must remember that you have divine immunity. That God is with you. That God is watching over you. And before 2020 got here, when we were living in 18 and 19, God knew 2020 would be such an unusual year. He's already made provisions to take care of us and to provide it for us. Husbands, priests of the home, take your wife and children together and remind them of the promises of God. Speak life. Speak life into your children. Into your spouses, single parents, gather your children and assure them that the God that you serve, that they know, will provide and will protect because he's not dead. God is still in control. We are not victims. We are victors. Stand with me, please, as I pray. Thank you, God. Thank, Thank you, God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. The Bible tells us that a father brought a son to Jesus. And Jesus said, do you believe? And he said, Lord, I believe. But held down my own belief. There were other times Jesus came up to people and he said, What do you want me to do for you? Mm. One person said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Some of us have allowed the circumstances to cause us to become spiritually blind. We've lost our spiritual sight. 
We no longer see the God we serve as a great, big, wonderful God. We no longer see him as a miracle worker, a healer and a deliverer. We've seen the demon of COVID-19 as bigger and mightier. But today God has sent a word to heal your disease. Sense of God, I'm human just like you. But I choose to believe God. I choose to trust God. I choose to take God at his word and not doubt. I choose to stand and having done all to still stand. I choose not to cast not away my hope, my expectation in which there's a great recompense of reward. I choose not to be like Job's wife who only want good from God and not to be tried and tested as God wills. The Bible tells us in James chapter 1, Come to all joy when you fall into various trials. He says, because the testing of your faith work of patience, endurance, perseverance, and long suffering. He says, when faith is complete, it leaves you mature and lacking nothing. We trust God this morning. If you are sick in your body, I want you to place your hand wherever that sickness is. If you don't feel well, just raise that hand. If there's a need in your home for food or money, then call Rabbi Satria. I want you to get that purse, that checkbook, that debit card, that wallet. And I want you to put it out and bring it into the presence of God. I want you to know today that the power of God is present to heal. Are you hearing me by the spirit of grace? The power of God is present to heal. This is a glorious time for the church of Jesus Christ to shine. Because while people are losing all their stuff, God has given us everything we ever needed and wanted. Father God, I bring the church that is in their homes. I bring every man and every woman that is visible and those who are there and they're listening, those who have called in and, and those who have logged in, I bring them all to you. I bring the brethren here in this sanctuary. Yes, God, I bring our bodies to you. And I thank you today, God, and I look to you to cover us under the blood of Jesus Christ. Cover every mother and every father Every husband, every wife, and every son, and every daughter. Cover us under the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because we strongly believe that there is wonder working power in the blood of Jesus Christ. And I decree and declare today by the Spirit of grace that there will be none sick among Calvary Temple. Hallelujah. I decree and declare that the devil will not touch the anointed Thank you. to bring us into eternity before we are finished our work and our assignment in the earth. Yes. Father, I believe the report of the Lord and I join my faith with the faith of those that are reaching out today and believe in you to do something mighty, to do something awesome. I bind the demon of fear that has been terrorizing the body of Jesus Christ. You foul lying spirit. I send you back to the pit of hell. You have no right and no authority to terrify us and to frighten uh, the church of Jesus Christ uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I command you to cease. Uh, I command you to desist. Uh, you will no longer terrorize uh, the body of Christ. Uh, we have an anchor that keeps the soul. Uh, we uh -huh. have a counselor that speaks to the Redeemer and not death. Uh, he's speaking health uh, and not disease. Uh, he's speaking hope. Uh, and not despair. He's speaking perfection and not hunger. He's speaking money and not death or being broke. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke you. Leave the homes of the people of God. 
Some of you may even lie down at night. That is when the thoughts come. Every spirit that sleeps in the bed. Or the bed, your bed or your bedroom or stronghold. And as soon as you get in there, there come the flood of thoughts. In the name of Jesus, God in your name. You said in your name that we will cast out demons. Uh, Father, within my rule, imagine your name. Uh, I cast demons and devils out of people's homes, uh, out of their bedrooms, out of that rocking chair, that favorite chair that you sit on. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I send the power of God to your home, to your living room, uh, your bedroom, the bathroom, the kitchen. Uh, as you move around in your homes, uh, I send the power of God. Uh, it is present to heal. Uh, I believe that God can be well and he does. Uh, I send the power of God to you. Right where you are, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that your spirit is anointed and your ears are anointed to hear the voice of the Holy Ghost speaking to you in the name of Jesus. God is your protector. Hallelujah. Father, cover them under your blood. Cover them and hide them in the secret place. I pray to their God. Thank you, God, that even now, 
But your people are giving in to the church so that the windows that they have caused to be closed will be reopened over their lives. God, I thank you, hallelujah, for miracle money. I thank you, God, for money to come from places and people that we didn't think that remembered us or even know us. I thank you, God, for the opportunities that we will buy without money. I praise him and I give you glory. And the pastor Hibbert and the deacons and the elders of this church before you now, God. I lift his wife, his household, his family. And I pray, God, that you will continue to strengthen their hands to do the work. I pray, God, that you will give this membership faith. Because some of you don't have the faith to come back to the house of God. And I pray that God will give you the faith to walk through the doors of the house of God. For there's nothing like being in the presence of God. In the house of God. Cover this leadership. And fathers then live out the testimony of faith in opening the doors of I pray, oh God, that it would encourage the brethren to trust you, to trust you. The Bible says anything without faith is sin. Ask God to increase your faith and to help you. If you can go outside to the supermarket, you can come into the house of God. Bless this body of believers today, God, and establish your will and your purposes in their lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen.